How's it going everybody? It's been a long time since I did a video covering this game or any video on the Battlefront series. I honestly don't think I've even touched Battlefront 3 in about a year and a half or something like that. It's definitely been a while. That might come as a surprise to some of you as this game was part of what put me on the map originally here on YouTube and Twitch a few years ago. Anyway, I've always wanted to do a video about this topic, you know, talking about the players I played with, some of the highs and lows that came with that on a game that I played for several years while I was in college, and all of what killed this game for me, and really part of the series for me as a whole. So I'm going to break this video down into two or three parts, and... I'm going to start it off with the highs and lows here and begin with a little bit more of a positive note. So yeah, it's really no secret this game at one point in time was one of my favorite games to ever play. I met a lot of people on here. The game and some of the game modes were a flat out addiction for me and I dominated at it after a while. I can honestly say looking back at it, there was no player that ever gave me a hard time. Even the ones that spammed and used nothing but the same generic overpowered bullshit that every tryhard on the game used. Even some of the cheaters on there at the time, they, they couldn't keep up with me on the scoreboard by the end of the round. It was just an easy game to play. And going through people on here one after another, missing the first... 10 matches of a Walker Assault match and occasionally still getting MVP and at the top of the scoreboard with only half a match played, that happened every once in a while. It was enjoyable to use two of the weaker guns in the game and even after they nerfed the TL-50 and using the SE-14C and still just going through people, there were so many clips in games that I didn't ever post that I should have at the time. I think I did about 75 videos in total on this game. I should have done two or 300 and started out just a little bit sooner. Because when I first started posting content on this game was when it began to die out. And it wasn't a very popular game to begin with. Around 2017, 2018 was the beginning of the end for this game. It didn't last as long as everyone else kind of hoped. On PC, the player base especially jumped early. The cheating on there was out of control and EA did nothing about it, or really on any system really. EA has always been useless. But other than that, there were some good memories. One thing that always stood out to me was the hate mail on this game in particular. Some people might not like hate mail, but I fucking love it. And I got a shit ton of it on this game, you know? It just added more fuel for the next game, for the next match that started. And by the time the next match was over with, it was pretty satisfying to look at the scoreboard and seeing some bum struggling to go positive after losing the game. And then usually after a few more matches, they would just back out and have nothing more to say. That was pretty enjoyable. So anyway, there were a lot of highs on the game and it was addicting especially some game modes like Walker Assault and Droid Run. But there were a lot of lows too. I'm not going to reiterate everything that I disagreed with on the game itself. I did a lot of videos bitching about that in the past, so I'm not going to fully go into that. But I will say some of the things that, quite frankly, have somewhat pissed me off over the years. And I haven't shared this before, but it's the bad apples. Some of the people that I used to game with, that I used to love gaming with. And I'll say this, it, it doesn't matter what random people say to me. It doesn't matter how much bullshit there is on a video game at the end of the day. Cheaters and so on. All of that happens on any and every fucking game you play now in today's gaming. None of that shit bothers me at the end of the day. I may bitch about it a little for a minute. But who cares? But it's the people that only care about themselves that you used to game with that bug the hell out of me. Because you look at, you look back at everything 
and you realize it could have been so much better and so much more if people could have just stuck together or if people were just better people, if you know what I mean. I just hate gaming with selfish pricks. That's why I always add a few people and never more. Especially on a game like this for PUBG. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a few key people that will probably watch this video at some point that know some of what I'm talking about. I don't care if they have a problem with me saying what I'm going to say. I'm already pissed off enough as it is with some of them, so I don't give a fuck with I, I, I don't give a fuck what some of them have to say at all. I'm just making that clear. Because a few of them were one hundred percent wrong in some major things. And I'm not gonna mention names, gamer tags for the most part, or go into everything in detail, but you know, there were a few people on Battlefront that were a part of the crew that I can say should have never been a part of it and should have never been around me at all but because they were friends of friends I had to deal with the bullshit sometimes so basically how everything started out for me on Battlefront 3 the few people who were friends with me that got the game were originally part of my crew on the game I started to roll with Clutch and others I met on Twitch or on the game itself later on my group eventually merged with friends of friends. That's how about 11 or 12 people in total in the very beginning rolled with me on occasion. And then it turned into an every other night thing for some of us. One of them was actually an EA developer. I won't say who it was because I know he wouldn't want me to do that. But later on, he ended up, you know, telling me clutch and one other guy in the group. I didn't believe him at first until he sent me some very convincing, well, let, let's just call it proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And he actually worked on Battlefront 3 and some other Star Wars games and Squadrons later on. He got some free links and gave one out to me right before it came out so I could play with him. It's too bad that game sucked. but. I was always giving them shit about why they didn't do certain things with Battlefront 2015 or why they didn't do shit about the cheaters, but he just did the art portion or like the maps, that sort of shit. So he couldn't help with the important stuff. Anyways, I, I, I'm getting caught up with the little less important details. So anyway, usually we would have two, four, six people playing together because half of those guys would be on one night. The other half would be off or in a different lobby or in a different game or whatever, you know. I was in college at the time, so even I wasn't really hammering the game compared to, let's say, other games in the past a long time ago. Anyway, just to stick with some of the basics, what ended up happening was two or three of these people turned out to be bad apples over time in the merged group. They started to play with some shady motherfuckers some shit ends up happening, you know, it's Xbox Live, there's drama queens involved. Some asshole is always trying to stir up some shit among buddies. One thing leads to another, part of the group splits off, two of the guys I didn't even want to talk to because I had no interest in bullshit, and I just wanted to play the game, chill, have fun with some buddies, and post some content. That was it for me. But anyway, that happens, move on. Some of the remaining people who were still playing with some of the shady motherfuckers decide to constantly invite them into the party, you know? What could possibly go wrong with that? Next thing you know, occasional arguments. Didn't happen often, but still happened. Lots of disturbed audio. I could not hear shit in terms of game audio all the time when this would happen. Out of the original 12, with about 4-6 to six people playing every other night together, turns into 20, turns into 25, 30, eventually turns into 40 to 45 fucking people in total, maybe more, with about 12 to 23 of them all in one party, constantly. The max number of people designed to play in a game mode on Battlefront 2015, Battlefront 3, a large game mode like Walker Assault was 8 players, I believe. Keep that in mind. 
So, of course, I said fuck that because I know what that feels like to go against huge, massive parties like that on Battlefield as well, which is gay as fuck if you ask me. I tried going down to two to four people again with certain people appearing offline or who were supposed to appear offline because I'm the type of person that chooses quality over quantity. But some people wouldn't do that, and guess what? Next thing you know, overloaded lobbies again. And I didn't want overloaded lobbies. I, I don't need overloaded lobbies to win at a fucking game, unlike some other people on different games I've mentioned in previous videos, if you catch my drift. And those overloaded teams would just kill the lobby constantly. Or the other team, I mean. And we would have to get into a new match just to play again or wait for more players to come in in order to get the next match to really pick up with a somewhat full lobby each time. Otherwise, we would get stuck with a half-assed enemy team bullshit lobby and those were boring as fuck to me in a large game mode like Walker Assault, especially when I was trying to post content. So I was really fucking pissed off about that after it happened so many times with people refusing to appear offline over a prolonged period of time. And to this day, I, I talked to three or four Battlefront people, including some of the guys I met on Twitch. All of them were the ones that felt the same way as me and preferred small groups. Everyone else I tried talking to on occasion, a somewhat good people, but they never really took the time to talk to me or to meet me halfway with anything. That's the best way I can put it. My crew lost control. It divided. Clutch was pissed off with one or two of the guys, and it ended up being more of a drag than having fun. Especially if I wasn't able to play with him because of that. You mix that in with overpowered bullshit on the game itself which EA and DICE refused to nerf because of some people on Reddit, and everybody and their brother spamming it every game, which took no skill at all, and the different cheaters that started to appear in almost every lobby, ignorant people in the massive group that started shit with other members of our group, with Clutch, with me, or with whoever, and a dying game that I wasn't getting a whole lot of well-deserved views on, and well, there you have it. There were various reasons why I quit playing the game or why it wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't just one or two things. Or because of one or two individuals. It was a mix of everything combined, especially with the in-house bullshit with the crew. And I'll say this too. One thing about me, I'm extremely loyal. To the point where it would shock you how far it would go. But loyalty one way is stupidity. Doesn't matter if it's a college buddy, somebody on Xbox I've known for one year, eight years, a friend, a family member. If you're with me, I'm with you to the point of no return. But if you constantly cause problems for me, for other people, or if you don't meet me halfway in at least communication to show me that you at least give a fuck about somebody else other than yourself, then you get X'd out. If you can't do the right thing, you are gone. That's how it goes. Some people just don't understand that. Or they just want to look at it from their own selfish perspective and not somebody else's for once. And it hasn't just been with some people on Battlefront. People in general just want to be like that. That's the society we live in now. And don't get me wrong, I'll give people a chance. I've given people too many chances. I've swapped phone numbers with some of these people after I've known them for years on Xbox Live. But no, after a while people disappoint you. I haven't mentioned any of the exact major shit with my old Battlefront crew, and I won't to a certain extent, other than what I've already mentioned with some of the basic shit. Because not everybody needs to know everything, but it's disappointing. I had some very good people, some very good players with me originally. If you ran into us between 2016 and 2019, I'm sure you remember us, we'll put it that way. One of them was a top 5 pilot in the game just like me, another one of them I met later on, and including myself, in my opinion, we had 3 of the top 5 pilots in the game in our squad at one point, out of any platform. 
when we chose to be in the air, it was over. But it is what it is, man. In time, things change. Some people just forget about what really matters, and that's your buddies around you, not the bullshit game or anything else. In all honesty, this original crew I had on Battlefront had the potential to be the very best group of players that played together on Battlefront 3 on any system. But at the end of the day, it takes more than two or three people to make things stick. And if you think everything I said earlier about me dominating people on this game was a bit too much, or us dominating people on this game, man, you should have met one or two of the people that were a part of the group later on that I did not want in our group. And there's a million guys like them. They're a dime a dozen. One of the guys was the definition of a schmuck that used nothing but the cheapest shit on the game. Talked about how good he was at the game, had one of the chicks in the group always bulking him up. But in reality, the guy sucked at the game and couldn't back up shit, unlike me or half of the motherfuckers I ran with. The rest of us could back it up. Clutch, if you're watching this, you know exactly who I'm talking about because I, I know you didn't get along with him. Like I said, there's a total of 3-4 guys I talk to on occasion out of all the Battlefront people I used to game with. Only two of them out of the original 11 or 12 other players, and that's a shame. I, I wish things could be different, but it is what it is, and it shouldn't be all on me to make things right. And it doesn't bother me at all to say the truth about it. Clutch was my right-hand guy on that game. We've had our small differences before, sure. And I know for a fact he wouldn't mind me saying that. But he's awesome to game with in other games when he's around. And that's part of why I, I've been gaming forever. When you meet good people, that makes gaming 20 times better, in my experience. No matter how many bad ones you come across. But enough of that. I, I'm getting carried away. So the last part of the video I wanted to bring up real quick is the downfall of the Battlefront series. Battlefront 4 was a joke to me. It still has nothing but issues after all this time. It's not even worth talking about. Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 from 04 and 05 have no multiplayer on console versus real players. You have to settle for bots. And Battlefront 3, in my opinion, has collapsed in every way possible to the amount of players to the failure of EA and DICE to listen to the right people when it came to changing the game modes and nerfing the wrong shit on the game years ago there's a group of people on there that still cheat and use alt accounts to get around the constant reports people fill out I know who some of them are but it doesn't even really matter because combans are nothing on Xbox Live and EA has done nothing about the constant cheaters on their games. I still read the comments that come in on my old Battlefront videos I have done, especially the cheating ones. I still read them all, unless my moderators delete, delete it before I see it, which only happens with some of the haters that have no life. Speaking of which, that reminds me. KDR on Battlefield and Star Wars Battlefront doesn't matter at all. I just have to mention that. I remember killing germs and some of the clowns that he was playing with back in the day. And after I killed him too many times for his liking, that fucking bum would dashboard and then reload back into the game just so it wouldn't affect his precious, fake, worthless kill-death ratio. How pathetic is that? You gotta cheat at a game, then dashboard to save your stats because you still sucked compared to a legitimate player. So, yeah, KD doesn't matter. The series is dead. Pretty sure 60% of the remaining player base is still a bunch of virgins that make alt accounts on a dead game while they accomplish absolutely nothing in their pathetic lives. On the same game and only game they've been playing for six or seven years straight. While they are praying for a fifth Battlefront game that is likely never to come, I'm actually hoping it doesn't so those cocksuckers have nothing to look forward to. I mean, most of the community has always been toxic or ends up cheating. We all know that. So I really don't think that they should get rewarded with another Battlefront game, even though people like me and all of you awesome people watching my videos 
definitely deserve another Battlefront game. Anyways guys, that sorts out everything I wanted to talk about for today. I know it's been a somewhat long video. We'll end it here. Thanks for checking this out. We'll catch you next time.